Guys, one man don't come out when they talk, say, federal government say they are trying to turn Nigerian citizens into beggars. Okay, say, T Tinubu, President Tinubu regime, don't they turn Nigerian people into beggars because of this recent palliative that Tinubu introduced. So, but I don't want to make, una, make it be saying that my mouth when I go take hear this matter. So I want to make, una just go watch the video now. When I go stay, when I go use una here, take here as the man to explain and well, as he they understand, say, this government, what they are doing is for selfish interest and they are turning Nigerian youth into beggars, okay? So I'm gonna watch the video. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go watch them. A prominent lawyer and university proprietor, Chief Afe Babalola, senior advocate of Nigeria this past week, declared that the government of President Bola Tinubu is turning Nigerians into beggars through its palliative regime anchored on the distribution of rice. Babalola expressed concern over the country's worsening hunger and insecurity, noting that many have abandoned their farms out of fear of attack by marauding bandits and killer herdsmen. He also emphasized the government's duty was to ensure citizens welfare and call for the revival of the 1963 constitution to address the nation's challenges. We are now being joined for a conversation on this matter by, with Dr. George Agbakahi, a public affairs analyst and Southeast leader of the Tinubu Support Organization. Good morning and it's lovely to have you on the show with us. Thank you very much for having me on. Happy Sunday to you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Here. Now, inflation in Nigeria is primarily driven by food inflation. And distribution of free rice, although nice in a very short term, has no long-term solution for hunger in Nigeria. It also results in higher inflation. Why do you believe that the president continues to use such short-term <clears throat> Um, short-term relief such as sharing of rice that also has negative implications for inflation and our economy first of all the issue of palliatives that was introduced by the current administration is just a temporary measure you see when we are really talking about the economy or the steps the current president, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, is taking, you know, to correct the anomalies in the economy. I think it is pertinent for us to look at it holistically. Let's look at it holistically. Our economy in the past has not been great. It has not been that great. There has really been a paradigm shift since President Bola Ahmed Tinubu came on board. You will remember vividly before he came in, our economy wasn't that great. Nigeria was kind of on a life support. The previous, the, the last administration, as well as the previous administration, we are all aware that it was just like an artificial economy that we had. When the president came in and saw the way the economy was going, he had to be bold enough to extricate the fuel subsidy, you know, and obliterate the multiple exchange rate to single exchange rate. In the past, the foreign exchange market, as well as the subsidy regime, it was a mess. It was only very few Nigerians that were benefiting, you know, from this corrupt practice. So the president came in just barely a year ago, maybe a year and two months, he has been able to lay the foundation and structures of an incoming great economy. You know, since he came in, there has been news report, you know, revenue has doubled by 9.1 trillion Naira, you know, in, since this 2024, since he came in. That's a step in the right direction. Before he came in, Nigeria was only servicing debts with 97% of our revenues. But since he came in, he has brought this down to 68%. So a lot has been done. You know, I hear what some of the opposition parties are talking about, but I see it as politically motivated. I'm not saying that they, they are, they are, that they, you know, there is no poverty in the land, but there has been temporary measures to mitigate this poverty. Like, for example, it's clear, 
five billion dollars, you know, has been paid off in terms of outstanding foreign exchange obligations. So these are all the things, you know, you know very well, look at the student loan. It's not only pa talking about palliative, palliatives. There are also initiatives that are woman driven, that are woman related. Look at the great student loan scheme. The president has been able to put smiles on the face of so many parents. So many parents in Nigeria is on record, cannot put their children to school. You know, 45.6 billion naira has been put into the student loan scheme. And as you know, a lot of students are taking advantage of this. Just last week, about 2.5 billion naira, you know, has been given to, to, to students and their universities. You know, a lot has been done, done. In the areas of infrastructure, a lot has been done. You see, let me tell you, look at, since the, since the president came into power, you know, the issue of oil, 1.6 million barrels of oil is what we are doing now. Before he came in, it was, it was less than about 1.2 uh, million. So a lot has been done. Compressed national gas. Even my own, my, on a personal note, I've also changed to it. A lot of Nigerians are changing compressed national gas, which is a step in the right direction. So that the issue of, you know, using petrol we soon become a thing of the past, you know, as a way of transportation in Nigeria. So a lot, a lot is happening. A lot is happening. Uh -huh. There is the youth, Nigerian Youth Investment Fund. About 110 billion is there. And the youth are benefiting from this. You know, so people that are talking that the president is only sharing palliatives. No, let us look at it holistically. He is doing a whole lot to improve the well meaning of Nigerians. This administration just came in. You don't expect magic to happen within one year. But I believe sincerely, in the next one year, one year and a half, this will get better in this country. What, what Nigeria needs, the president, what is needed is patience. The president has the interest of this great country at heart. And he will do a whole lot to fulfill the aspirations of Nigerians. All right, Chief. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you referred to those who are complaining as members of the opposition. Uh, but the basis for uh, this interview with you today, sir, uh, has to do with the uh, advisory uh, from uh, one of Nigeria's uh, uh, biggest legal luminaries, who is not aligned to any party whatsoever, uh, Chief, Chief Afe Babalola, a senior advocate of Nigeria. And I think that it is important to dimension what he's saying uh, when he uh, made a plea that the president shouldn't focus on palliatives alone so that he doesn't turn Nigerians into beggars and that he should do the two key things that the constitution requires that any a government should do, which is to secure uh, and safeguard lives and property. And he made reference to the fact that part of the reason why people uh, are struggling is because they can't go to their farms. It's because the farms have been taken over uh, largely by bandits and terrorists. And he says, do something about that. And then he talked you know, about, about the welfare of the people. A country, a government is not supposed to be run uh, like a PLC. A government is supposed to look after uh, the welfare of its people in totality, not by, you know, dishing out handouts in the names of palliatives, of rice today, of bread tomorrow, of gari, you know, uh, at the next day. So he's saying that dimension the problems of Nigerians and empower them to be able to look after themselves. It says that if uh, they can afford transportation because of the cost of fuel, they can go to their farms uh, because of, the, of what is happening at the farms. They can't afford electricity because you have also, you know, suddenly removed subsidy. We have turned subsidy uh, into something that we now demonize. Those are the things uh, that Chief Afeba Balola is speaking against. I wonder if you have thoughts as to the core essence of his intervention and not to refer to what is being said as, you know, uh, attacks from opposition. Thank you very much for that question. 
You see, the issue of insecurity mm. in the country didn't just start in the current administration. You know, um, <laughs> we are all aware, even during the Obasanjo regime, towards the end, when Boko Haram came into play, that led to you know, a lot of kidnappings during Jonathan administration, you know, as well as during Buhari administration. It's not a current phenomenon. But I can tell you specifically that in this current administration, the issue of banditry, the issue of kidnapping, as well as farmers, herders, conflict, which are the major issues you know, of insecurity in the country, as well as Boko Haram, you know, they have reduced a little bit. You know, our military is doing a pretty good job in ameliorating these security concerns. It is on record that in the, since the president came in, you know, the military has been able to neutralize over 6,000 planned attacks. They've, they've been able to capture, you know, a lot of terrorists, about 4,500 according to news reports. You know, a lot has been done. You know, we don't expect magic overnight. The president has been able to, you know, provide equipments, military equipments, arms, helicopters, to the military. I think the, the, the president has tried in this area and the military is doing a great job you know, to curtail these issues of security. I understand very well that the issue of insecurity is a great problem in the country. But it's happening. Even the, the um, agriculture you are talking about, there has also been a lot of improvement in the area of agriculture. You know, the president, the current administration, you know, has distributed a whole lot of fertilizers rolling into millions you know to farmers all across the country the minister of agriculture has done a great deal for example in the for the, in the in the history of this great country we now have dry farming dry farming is taking place in in jigawa dry farming is taking place in Kasina and some other places in the north the only thing that is required like i said earlier on is patience within the next one year things will start getting better i really feel you know i understand the plight of chief um, afe babolala he's a great nigerian and he himself you know is one of the elites in this country he understands you know the intricacies you know in government you know so the point is that it takes time for some of these things to start happening the president is doing a lot not it's not only palliatives that he's sharing the palliative is just a temporary measure. You know, there are a whole lot, you know, that is going on. Okay, for example, look at the... Oh, excuse me. Let me put this thing back here. You know, a whole lot is happening. You know, the president is doing a whole... Look, look at Smedan. Smedan is, a, is a, a federal government agency. Like I said, 200 billion naira is domiciled in that area. You know, and a lot of small and micro you know businesses medium you know enterprises they are going they are taking advantage the only thing you can tell me is that the government also need to do a whole of a whole lot of job in propagating government information mm. so that the nigerian people more especially the youth will know of these government policies and know where to go and tap it there are a lot that is going on Okay, thank you, Mr. Abakahi. I've um, listened to all that you said. But if we bring it back to you know this uh, statement for or this uh, contribution from uh, Fabiola himself, he argues that distributing palliatives like rice and beans uh, discourages people from working and leads to poverty. Now, how do you reconcile this with the government's efforts to provide immediate relief to those in need? When we talk about these different policies, is there something that is long term enough that has a, a transition plan? Plan from palliatives to more sustainable economic policies and he also called for the revival of the 1963 constitution to address the nation's challenges what is your view on this proposal do you think that a, a constitutional change could have an impact on the current socioeconomic issues so that uh, touching on the distribution of palliatives leading to poverty and restructuring uh, so the constitution <coughs> being uh, restructured the 1963 constitution, constitution in this case? Well, in the area of um, um, 
distribution of palliatives that you, you know, have talked about, you know, on so many occasions in this interview. You know, we're, we're all aware that, okay, look at the Consumer Credit Corporation. It's a pretty good initiative, you know, that came into being in this administration, you know, in order to help Nigerians acquire essential, you know, products. You know, a lot is happening. <coughs> the, the, the area you talked about in respect of the constitution, mm. you know, I, I don't really have much to talk about that one because I know we have the Senate and we have the, the House of Representatives whose duties are to look into any constitutional amendment. Eh? But I think I would really suggest that Nigerians let go this issue of constitutional conference for now. Let the president do a work that he is trying to do for this country. Even if it's next year, next two years, we can start talking about that. The president has programs. He has matched out a lot of programs that he's doing to, you know, revive the economy. Our economy was in a mess before he came in. That's why he took that bold decision, you know, to, to, to get rid, you know, of the corrupt, um, corrupt, what do I, to, to, to get rid of the corrupt um, regimes, you know, in terms of um, fuel subsidy, as well as the, um, the obliteration of the exchange rate. These, these are bad policies. And I'm, I can tell you, all the previous administrations since 1999, they all knew these policies are bad. But they kept them. And only few, few Nigerians, we are benefiting from them and the whole masses, are, are so, we are suffering. So I think the president was bold enough, was courageous enough to say that enough is enough. There are certain presidents that will say and they will continue to wallow, you know, with the same fuel subsidy regime and the foreign exchange. Is it not why um, the former central bank governor, Emefile, is where he is today? Look at the kind of corruption that was engaged in this particular, you know, foreign exchange market with the, with the former central bank governor and, and, and his cliques. The same thing happened during the Diziani era in the oil market. The corrupt, it became the bane of corruption in this country. I, so I, I really thank the president for getting rid of these, these programs. You know, now we know that what is happening is the real thing. The president is doing well. So, sorry. You know, look, look, go to Niger Delta. Yeah. If you go to Niger Delta, there is a little bit of peace and tranquility there. Okay. You know, the, the issue and the military is also doing very well. You know, in trying to get rid of, you know, the, the, the young people that are messing, you know, our oil over there. And that's why we had to, you know, like I said, since this year, yes. 1.6 million okay, so I'd like to barrels of oil like is coming out, you know, of, of Niger data and environs, yes, like which is a step in the right direction. A lot, a lot has been done, you know, but let's give the president a little bit more time. You know, like I said earlier, our, our economy, practically speaking, yes, sir. has moved up a little bit. Okay, so you're saying our economy okay, has for moved example, up a little bit, so I'd like to ask, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, so you said our yes. economy has moved up a little bit. I want to ask you, what, um, what, how are you measuring that? Has, has GDP improved? Do we have a faster growth rate? Do we have improved human development index? Has unemployment reduced? Has poverty rates reduced? Has child malnutrition reduced? What indice, what social economic indice are you using to say that our economy has improved? Before President... Bola Ametinibu came in. In, in 2022, our economy rose two by two by two percent. In 2023, when he stayed half of the year, it went up slightly to 2.9 percent. And it is on record. Check it. It is on record. In 2024, the economy is now up three by three percent. That is the GDP. You know, the, the economy is, is going well. I, I know the president said it to Nigerians that it will not be easy. 
Yes. It will not be easy. Yes, sir. What However, it took was a bold decision to yes. resuscitate the entire economy. But the, the economy grew by 3.1%. That was actually a downgrade from the prediction of 3.3%. So it's not doing as well as it should have done um, after we came out of the 2020 pandemic that everyone felt worldwide. But thank you very much, sir, for your time this morning and thank you for your contribution to the show.